you probably clicked on this presentation because you're either an investor in GoGoRo or you're thinking about investing in the company. And we fall into that latter camp. So we decided to take a look at this SPAC. And when it comes to SPACs, we approach them with a great degree of caution. So we've covered now over 100 disruptive tech SPACs. 67% of those are on sale at 50% off or more. And 40% of those trade at 70% off from the initial offering price. So there's a lot of SPACs that have lost a lot of people money. And there's certainly some interesting companies in there that may represent value. We wanted to see if Go Go Row was one of them. And it's certainly, there are signs of this being a very compelling company, at least based on the success they've had in Taiwan. So this is a Taiwanese firm that has built a platform around swappable batteries for scooters, electric powered scooters. So they have these stations spread out across Taiwan and you can take the lithium battery out of your scooter and put it into the station and take another one. And that way you don't have to sit around waiting for your battery to charge. It's worked very well in Taiwan here. You can see that they have more than 2 million locations, 5 billion miles ridden, 467 people as subscribers. That's very important. So they sell this platform as a subscription and 100% of the people who buy scooters, whether those are uh, scooters provided by Gogoro or other firms that use Gogoro's platform, 100% of the people that purchase those also purchase a subscription. So it's potentially a very lucrative business. However, we don't know if that's the case yet, but anytime you have a company that's selling hardware, they need to have some sort of recurring revenue stream attached to that. And Gogoro certainly does. Now, we look at the swappable battery concept for e-vehicles there's some advantages here so you don't need to tow your vehicle to a charge station you'll see that sometimes in the highways in america somebody's electric car being towed into a start a charging station because it ran out of power there's no lengthy refueling time so you don't need to sit around waiting for your car to charge and it works well for scooters so the lithium battery that uh, Gogoro uses weighs about 20 pounds. You contrast that to the Tesla Model 3, which has a battery pack of over a thousand pounds. So this whole idea of swapping batteries works very well when it comes to scooters. Now, when we look at how Gogoro has been making their money in 2021, 70% of revenues came from selling around 72,000 scooters and what they describe as sales related services, a much smaller component. And 27% of revenues, around $100 million, were linked to their battery swapping subscription service. So one of the things we noted is that 2021 revenues came in at $366 million. That beat their SPAC projection of $324 million. We love to see when that happens because most SPACs haven't been able to do that. They overpromise, they underdeliver. Now, the main point of contention we have immediately with this firm is the fact that 96.8% of the revenues in 2021 came from Taiwan, a place where government subsidies are helping fuel growth. We don't know to what extent they are, but if you look in their most recent 20F filing, you can see that marketing expenses increased in 2021 by around $9 million because of a decline in the government subsidy. So we know that if the government subsidies decline, that it costs this firm more money to sell their scooters. So when we look at where they might look for international expansion, here's an interesting metric from their SPAC deck, and it shows the penetration of powered two-wheel vehicles in various countries. And on the left there, you see China, which is quite low, though that because China is so big, there's still a lot of vehicles there. You can see the US there on the right. And of course, the country with the most scooters, Vietnam. It's interesting when you go to Vietnam and you cross the street, there's a sea of scooters. And the way that you cross the street is you put one foot in front of the other and proceed very slowly without looking at all at the oncoming traffic. That will allow the scooters to go around you. Because if you start looking at them and trying to judge your step, they're gonna hit you. And it's a really awkward thing to do, but it works surprisingly well. And if you're ever in Vietnam, you should try doing that. So these are potential places that 
go go Ro can expand and in 2021 they signed a number of deals including india china indonesia israel but the ones that we're going to be focused on are the ones that the company expects to see revenues from quite soon so that would be the deals that they've done in china particularly and india so when we look at the china opportunity here we can see that in china they have the largest electric ptw so that's uh, powered two-wheeler so electric scooters more or less they have 325 million electric scooters on the road it's interesting in beijing in the mornings when you walk out on the streets you hear these little hums and it's just these electric scooters flying around and a lot of them are powered by lead acid batteries so they're not certainly not all lithium power or lithium battery power but china is the place that gogoro plans to expand into first and that's why it's going to be a main focus from our perspective versus speculating on other potential markets they might enter into later like india so we're particularly interested to know how their progress is in china so who they've partnered with the number one electric two-wheel maker of china yadia with a 23 percent market share and also this other chinese firm and they are already deploying stations in china what we're interested in is not the news about deployments we're interested in seeing those revenues and we'll talk about how they expect to make money from these deals so the chinese deal is governed by prc law and <laughs> If you've done business in China, you will understand that there's a lot of um, difficulties associated with doing business with Chinese companies, and there's a concern there. So Gogoro will sell battery packs and battery swapping stations to this joint venture, which they haven't sunk any money into. Uh, their Taiwan subsidiaries will provide consulting services, and they'll receive a licensing fee associated with the SaaS platform. There's three revenue streams there we'd assume the licensing fee is high margin consulting services it's difficult to say and selling battery packs and battery swapping stations well hardware is typically low margin so these are all questions that we'd have around the deal that they're entered into in china if you look at the spac deck in terms of projection so they expect to have a let's say around 10 percent international revenues max in 2022 and you can see by this chart they would expect those to come from china although we have some questions around that and then suddenly in 2023 china accounts for 283 million dollars in revenues seems quite aggressive so we really want to monitor the progress of that and not just assume that's going to happen it's going to happen easily so when we look at where the company is making money today you can see here that sales of electric scooters in taiwan have been tailing off since 2019 and that's to be expected as they captured market share you'll sell fewer and fewer scooters of course the energy services revenue this is their subscription platform has been growing you would expect to see that and then you have these other categories so the question is well where would the china deal revenues from that show up in these categories we don't know so we can look to this second chart in the 20f which shows the percentage of revenues coming from countries other than taiwan and they've put this other bucket and they've also stated that they will describe in this section countries where they're getting more than 10 percent of overall revenues from so you'd expect china to appear in here and you might ask well where are these international revenues coming from in 2019 since they hadn't entered into any of those deals yet and that's an outstanding question but this would be where you would start to see significant growth so the question of course is how much growth can we expect to see in international revenues for 2022 well they tell us what they're expecting so revenue of 460 to 500 for 2022 they estimate that will generate 90 percent from taiwan at a uh, say minimum to 95 percent so our range of international revenues is going to be 23 million to 50 million compared to 2021 so when we look back here we see well they had 10 million in 2021 
uh, they had 2 million. So there's quite variable between these three years. But let's say we would expect to see at least $23 million in international revenues. And 50 would be better because then it would start to become more meaningful. So we're going to wait until we start to see these international revenues falling in because we know how difficult it is to do business in China. Now, investors in this company need to also be aware of the complexities around how this share structure is positioned. And you can see here that they operate from the Cayman Islands and then they have all these subsidiaries and holding companies. And while it doesn't have the same fear factor as a Vi structure, the crazy Chinese Vi structure, it's still to be of a concern that you're buying shares in a Cayman Islands company that Cayman Islands holding company that's subject to the laws of Cayman Islands. And they describe all those risks, of course, in their in documents. Now, we have some other questions and concerns around investing in Gogoro. Their overall gross margins at around 16%. So that's not bad for a hardware company, potentially. But what are the gross margins for subscriptions, battery stations and batteries that they're going to be selling to China? The terms of the China deal, we don't know much about those. And we ask the question here, what keeps China from being China? Well, guess what? The Chinese are very shrewd when they conduct business, and it's not uncommon for them to do business with somebody, figure out what they're doing, and copy it. That's just how the Chinese operate. Whether you think that's wrong or right, that's how business gets done in China. So that's a concern, right? And another concern would be China's attitude towards Taiwan. And I have put this, the NVIDIA concern, somebody raised this. Well, what happens to shares of NVIDIA if China attacks Taiwan? That's a black swan event, but it's something that you need to think about. And the investments that the United States is making in chip infrastructure tell you that that's a concern. So what happens to shares of Gogoro the first time the Chinese start lobbing some rockets at Taipei? Well, that needs to be considered. And of course, it's a black swan event, but China's attitude towards Taiwan has never been good. And China interacting with Taiwanese firms, you need to take that into account if you're an investor. Now, when we raise these concerns, we wrote a research piece around this and published it. The analyst that wrote that piece had told me, well, you know, this is actually a pretty promising company. We think it is, and we'll potentially look at it next year. And the fact that we didn't get on our knees and start sucking off the sacred cow pissed off some cheerleaders on Twitter. And here's some of the barrage of attacks that these immature, unknowledgeable individuals who would certainly not qualify as investors had to say about it. So when we have these people start to lob their criticism in the comment section, we're going to deal with them accordingly. And this is a concern to real investors because it shows that this is a meme stock and the Reddit types have gotten a hold of it. And you dare not say anything bad about the company or criticize it, otherwise they will attack you. These are individuals that are speculators and drive up shares of a company and act irrationally. And that does no good for people who actually want to make money in the market. So one thing we wanted to check on was to say, What's the simple valuation ratio? How is this company valued? It's certainly not overvalued at all. So at a market cap of $1.7 billion, we'd consider that to be a, quite a small firm with $378 million in annualized revenues from last quarter, valuation ratio of 4.5. That's pretty low. Compare that to Tesla, which is about double that. So we wouldn't consider this firm to be overpriced by any means, but we consider it too risky at this point of time because it's early days. So the key metric to watch that we'll be watching is international revenue growth that will help show traction. It's very difficult to start building a business in China when you're working with Chinese firms. So we'll need to see that revenue growth go through. No matter how many screenshots the cheerleaders want to send over of stations installed in China, we're aware that three big Chinese cities have stations being installed. We're focused on revenues. We want to see those revenues start flowing. So we'll revisit the stock in 2023 to see what progress was made this year. So please put your comments in the comments section. Subscribe to our channel. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video today.